this is actually going to be uh, Java crypto programming. No, how do I share? PPT. Is there anyone who has not signed the attendance? I need to share, right? Yeah. So good evening. Uh, so now let us get into uh, the same thing of cryptography programming in Java. Okay. So I feel that Java is more easier, <laughs> but anyway, let me uh, take it up. So I think uh, I'm not getting this. Uh, so, a little bit of uh, theory here, basically how Java cryptography architecture that we say JCA works. Uh, this is basically a provider architecture, which means they provide a specific set of APIs for digital signing, message digest generation, encryption, decryption, certificate generation, and uh, certificate validation, etc. They keep on, uh, they use the term CSP. The CSP stands for cryptographic service provider. Okay, so uh, how Java has architected this particular package is slightly different from the way how the traditional other Java programs work. They are basically implementation, in, this is uh, cryptography programming are basically implementation independence is there. That means uh, you do not as an application developer, you do not have to implement those security algorithms, whether RSA or ECC or DS, uh, whatever the algorithms are, or MD5 or SHA. So you can actually request the service from the cryptographic service provider. So CSP service providers would be the actual uh, providers who would have actually implemented, so you use them. And uh, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, it's not that, uh, not only that you have to use uh, specifically whatever Java is provided, you can actually remove Java provided libraries and you can also pr use the libraries provided by others, say for example, Bouncy Cancel. Mm -hmm. Bouncy Cancel is one of the popular uh, Java libraries which is available. And uh, uh, the implementation of these particular cryptographic functions, we, are, we can say that these are called basically engine classes. Uh, so basically what Java has done is uh, these engine classes basically you will not be able to uh, extend them, but you can actually create an, uh, meaning you will not be directly able to create an object of it. You have to use the factory method for creating an object of it and then you'll be able to use it. So just we'll see that in more detail. So basically JCA is an extension of the uh, meaning a cryptographic provider, which is basically Sun JCE. And uh, there are two terms here. API is a standard term that is application provider interface. And second term is called as SPI, that is service provider interface, which provides the classes, interfaces, and methods which can be extended and implemented. So now as far as uh, the main uh, core package which we are interested or uh, most, which we need to note, up, note here is uh, java.security.provider. This is the main base class for all these security providers. Every cryptographic service provider, that is you can write your own library also. Any your own, uh, you can actually create your own implementations of RSA, you can create your own implementations of um, uh, digital signing, encryption, whatever it may be. Uh, but you should uh, adhere to these particular things. So it can actually come under java.security.provider. So each uh, CSP contains an instance of this class, which contains the provider's name and lists all the security algorithms which it implements. So uh, providers actually provide a complete package that uh, have a com concrete implementation of the crypto algorithms. And each uh, Java implementation, that is J Java developer uh, 
uh, kit, uh, Java development kit that actually has one or two providers associated with it. One is basically the Jan Sun uh, JC implementation. They meaning they um, themselves are implemented these algorithms and they provide a package for that. And uh, all APIs, whatever Java has provided, that is actually provided through the factory method, which means uh, you will not be able to directly create, say for example, Java, for example, if I am writing a class example is equal to new example, that is not possible because you try to create an object newly. Here what you do is you use a factory method for creating an object of that, uh, this thing. That factory method should be provided by uh, that particular class. So that we will see in a moment of time. So this is the architectural design of uh, Java. What they have done is the application yours is that uh, at the top and there is a provider framework which is there and there are multiple providers are there. Say for example, SHA1 has been provided by uh, provider A, B, C and similarly 256, 2512, so many implementations are there. I can choose as my application developer, I can choose which algorithm or which provider to provide, okay. Say for example, I can take uh, a provider uh, B, MD5 as well as provider C and then uh, I can actually use it. So that is my, this particular left hand side. Right hand side guy actually is using uh, both provider uh, C for both of uh, his implementation. Uh, while uh, the left hand side person is actually application is using provider B's implementation. So depending on the service providers, you can actually use it. Say for example, Bouncy Castle and Java, both they can mix and match. That is also possible. The APIs from Java, uh, Bouncy Castle also will be able to use and uh, Sanjava also will be able to use. So this is how the flexibility is given, okay. But as far as this session is concerned, I will be using the standard uh, Java uh, libraries here. And uh, these are the core classes which we'll be discussing and using java.security, java.security.cer, uh, uh, interfaces and spec. Prime, uh, primarily they are in the packages of uh, java. Uh, java X crypto, crypto interfaces and spec. So now straight away let us get into the program without much ado. So let us see how to generate a symmetry key in Java. So uh, obviously you have to import the java X crypto package and java. Uh, math package, the math package I am just using for uh, uh, displaying those uh, keys. Uh, so you can see that uh, the algorithm, whatever algorithm you want to use, let us say I am just using DES, you can actually use AES also. Uh, so I have to create an uh, object of that uh, DES implementation. So how do I create an object of the DES implementation? So basically I will not be able to use the new operator in Java, actually we don't call new as uh, method in Java but we call the word new as operator in Java. So I, by using the new operator I will not be able to create uh, this thing. So but instead of that the factory method has been given. So for example, uh, key generator is the class which actually uh, has the uh, this particular implementations. So I can use key generator dot get instance and uh, I can give the name of the uh, algorithm instead of D, I can, I have given here as DES. So then I will get a object of the DES, uh, uh, um, uh, DES implementation. So once I get, then actually I can generate the key. So here a symmetry key is a shared key or a secret key. So kg dot uh, generate key will actually give me the actual secret key. And then I uh, just print it, actually printing is little tougher here. So we use this big integer and then do the math here. So that is the thing. So just I will uh, show how it is being done. I don't know. I want to show program also here. This kind of thing. So here you can see the uh, method, whatever we discussed, the same program is here. So I am using the command prompt. I don't know whether you are able to see this. Oh, sorry. 
vector size may be small, but font let me increase it. Maybe 28. Okay. So this is anyway I have compiled it earlier, but uh, then dot Java. So this is the output of this particular program, so which has generated uh, the key. <coughs> so you can see this, okay. So now I can actually, uh, if I run it again, again another set of uh, random keys will be generated. So that's the thing. So that's what we got it here. A new string, uh, 7F, whatever it starts. Now instead of DES, I can actually have AES also. Let me save this, recompile it, and once again run it. So this is a AES key. Okay, so this is a AES key. Uh, of course, you know that that is a 56-bit key for DES, while you have a 128-bit key for AES. Of course, there are more options which I am not going to go into this point of time. Okay, once again, if you want to run, you can run it. So every time you run, you get a different key. So that's the thing. So let me clear. And now let me uh, get back to this presentation. And uh, now let us go for the next step, that is encryption and decryption. So encryption, uh, was first actually there are two things. First of all, I need to set the algorithm, what algorithm I want, DES or AES. And then uh, there is a, what is the buffering type I have to use, ECB. And what is the padding type I have to use? All those things, parameters I have to set first of all. Based on that, I will get that particular implemented object, that is cipher object. So I'm going to use something called as a cipher class here. So for using the, I need to get a cipher object for that. As I said, I cannot write cipher C is equal to new cipher. That is not possible. So I have to use the factory method here, cipher.getInstance. And then I have to mention what is the uh, algorithm name and the padding and the buffer, everything has to be mentioned. And then for next step, I initialize that cipher. I initialize by saying what is the mode, whether I want to encrypt or decrypt, so that I say. And then I have to give the key. What is the key I have to use for encryption or decryption? That is the thing. And finally, I have to do the operation. That is uh, the encryption operation or decryption operation has to be done. So this is what has to be done for encryption. Uh, so once you know encryption, then things become easy for uh, decryption also. Decryption is same. Basically, uh, what you do here is uh, you change the mode. Uh, mode was uh, previously it was encrypt mode, cipher dot encrypt mode. So now you change it to cipher dot decrypt mode, and the key is going to be same because that's a secret key and it is going to be same. And a do final method. Actually, there is a method called do final which will do the actual operation. First is initialization of the ciphers, and then finally the do final method which will do the actual operation. So with this, again we are now ready to do the uh, algorithm part. So let us go to the program. So let me get it to symmetric ciphers.java. So I have taken uh, the DES uh, ED uh, algorithm basically with padding. And uh, let me actually, uh, first of all, I need to, uh, before doing the symmetric encryption and decryption, I need to generate the key pair. So for generating the key pair, actually I have concatenated the two sentences. First of all, I'm getting an instance of the symmetry key cipher, that is key generator dot get instance, and finally generate the key. So that's what I'm getting, cipher dot get instance algorithm cipher. So that has been obtained. So once that is obtained, what I do is, I actually do the encryption part. So encryption I have written as a separate method for people to easily understand. So uh, you can see that two method, uh, this particular thing, this one is very important, this not this one, this one. This sets up the mode, that is encrypt mode. So encrypt mode and key. So key is basically the one which we generated in the previous one. So here you created the key here. Okay, key is equal to key generator dot get instance. So this is where we got the symmetry key. So you got cipher dot encrypt mode comma the key. And then finally, what you did is, after you initialized it, you did uh, you need to, uh, meaning uh, set the, by, meaning you need to pass the input bytes and you call the invoke the do final method, it will actually create the encrypted 
this thing uh, cipher method and uh, it will do the uh, symmetric encryption so this is what will happen here so same thing now you can think for decrypt also okay only thing is you need to change the mode okay so here what happens is the encrypt mode has become decrypt mode and uh, for input you have to pass the encrypted bytes right for decryption you have to pass the encrypted bytes as your input so if that you pass as the input what output you will get you will get the plain text okay so you get the plain text and then you have got the full data recovery so that's what actually happens so now let us see how it works so java c symmetric cipher dot java symmetric uh, ciphers okay so input text actually i have written in the program as hello so and this was the key generated the encrypted text was this one and decrypted text we got as hello hello dot okay so you can see the encrypted text i have given hello dot okay so this is the one so and it got it here so if i run this program once again will i get the same encrypted text and decrypted text yes encrypted no right because the key would have right <laughs> while decrypted you will get the same okay so as you can see that uh, encrypted text is different because the key has become different but anyway decryption you will get the same value so this is what actually happens here and of course you can uh, play around uh, changing the uh, text and uh, all those things so this is as far as uh, this one is concerned so now we will move ahead and uh, move ahead with uh, uh, the next part so as you know that uh, uh, in symmetric key cryptography we just use the same shared key for both encryption and decryption but key sharing among untrusted entities the challenge that's why public key uh, cryptography came into picture for secure key exchange so now uh, for public key cryptography it is also called as asymmetric key cryptography you always have a pair of keys okay basically a pair of keys uh, one is called as the uh, in the key pair one is called as the public key another one is called as the private key so if you use one of the key for encryption you have to use the other key for decryption that is if you use pu public key for encryption then you have to use the private key for decryption if you are using private key for encryption then obviously you have to use the public key for decryption so in asymmetric cryptography we have to do these many things first of all you have to generate the key pair both public key and private key and then we will uh, encrypt the message we can encrypt the message with public key and then decrypt with private key see there is a slight uh, subtle difference is there i just need to tell here for digital signing we always use our private key okay and then send it to the receiver so that the receiver can use the signer's public key signer's public key and verify it that is one thing second thing is if i want to send some secret with you using public key cryptography what i should do is i should encrypt with your public key so that other than you nobody else will be able to decrypt it so that is the fundamental uh, principles behind this cryptography part so now straight away we'll get into the uh, ways in which we can do it in java so again there is uh, instead of key generator here we are having a key pair generator okay that's the class which is available in java and as i said that you cannot write key pair generator new key pair generator we have to use the factory method for creating an object so key pair generator dot get instance algorithm name we have to give i am going to give us rsa ecc also there is a meta mechanism <laughs> but right now let me stick with rsa only and i can set the key size here okay as we noted that 1024204840964 i can give the key size so i am going to just give us 1024 for password computations here and then i can generate once i have initialized once i set the algorithm set the key size now i am ready to generate the key pair so this is how i generate the key pair using generate key pair method after the key pair has been generated if i want to get the public key of that i have to use key pair dot get public if i want to get private key then i have to get the get private key actually so that is the thing so this is the code just let me uh, quickly uh, um, just highlight these two things 
that is initializing the uh, algorithm yeah, sorry getting an object of the implementation of RSA or this thing that is number one. Number two is initialization of the key size, number three is key pair generation and fourth basically is public key and private key. So that is how we are uh, going to use these methods. And before I proceed further I just want to show you something which is very important. Actually uh, RSA public key will be shown to you in the screen something of like this but uh, there is something called if you break up the public key it has something called header which is having a modulus component and there is a public exponent also and there are some blank space separators also. This is as far as the public key is concerned and if you look at private key it has more information. See uh, because you know that the uh, key pairs are generated using prime numbers what is the prime numbers which was used what is the exponents which were used and what is the modulus which has been uh, used and the coefficients and finally the separators all this information and including the algorithm version also all of this information will be available in the uh, uh, in the in the private key okay so this is how actually uh, when you look at the private key it look like this so it looks so big but it contains all of these components modulus prime private component and the exponents etc so this is how it looks like so we will straight away now go into the uh, uh, encryption and decryption may basically we'll just go into the algorithm part and the implementation part so i'll just look at uh, the key pair generator here so the same thing that we discussed um, key pair generator key gen getting an instance of rsa initializing to 1024 bit and then generating the key pair and then uh, key dot get private and key dot get public. So, and then how do I print? I mean, there is another thing in Java, so we have to use this big integer uh, big integer object to print it. So that's what we have been doing. So now let me look at this. So this is how it looks like. So please let me just go. My, God, my mouse is missing. Let me just once again. Okay. I'm unable to figure the mouse, but anyway, let me. I have a touch screen, so that helps me here. So, uh, if you look at, uh, oh sorry, I think it's not visible. Okay, I need to just close the presentation, I guess that's what the reason. So, this is the program, basically whatever I said, key pair generation, key in, uh, initialization of the uh, key size and then we generate the key pair and then how do we get the public key and how do we get the private key. So that's what and then we use the big integer for displaying. So now let me go to this uh, CLS Java already I have compiled it okay. So uh, uh, what I need to do is I just need to run this program. So when I run this program basically we can see here. Uh, key pair has been generated si successfully. This is the private key. Parameters is null. What is the modulus component? What is the private exponent? And what is the public key? And uh, the public exponent and all those things come. And then public key is coming. And then finally private key. We are actually getting and printing it out. So this is how the complete uh, this thing is there. So let me so this is how it looks like. So here you can see that uh, uh, we are printing the public key and the private key. So this is how it looks like. So this is how we have generated the key pair. So now let me move uh, further ahead. Okay, I 
toxicity from the excess con this is actually so this is where we got and now let us go to the message digest algorithm so this will help us in creating the uh, message digest and we can use of course SHA2 uh, whatever it is but I am just going with MD5 uh, so first of all we need to get an implementation of uh, the MD5 algorithm okay so that is what we are how are you getting again you are using the factory method get instance and we are getting it and after that very important step and uh, this thing is you have to whatever you want to create a digest of that particular string that you need to update it you have to use the update method okay you have to use the update method for writing the meaning for actually putting up the uh, plain text into that particular digest method and then finally that dot digest is the one which will actually do the uh, signature generation so that is what will actually happen okay so these are the things so now uh, straight away this algorithm you can see that I am trying to uh, meaning I, uh, meaning I, whatever bold is important but before that you can see the first one message digest md is equal to message digest dot get instance of md5 okay we are getting an implementation of the runtime implementation of the md5 algorithm and then I am just giving a simple text whatever it may be password 1 2 3 you can give whatever you want and then I am actually I have to pass this uh, text as a byte array so I am doing some conversion using my text uh, string manipulations and then I send that particular data to the update method as an input to the update method so this updates the input to digest and after that md.digest is the one which actually completes the digest operation okay which actually does the digest operation still the previous method is only to update the data okay so actually it pushes the data to the algorithm but it does not do anything okay the next step md.digest is what actually does the actual implementation this is slightly this nuances are slightly important because now as you can see in further examples we will look at it so this is the output so now once again let me uh, go and just uh, show the program here so this is the one md5 message digest dot get instance md5 and the string trying to con uh, convert into a byte array and I am passing the byte array to the update method so basically whatever data I have to pass it to the algorithm that I have to pass it through this way only okay whatever input data that I need to pass it to the implementation of the algorithm I need to pass it by md.update and then finally md.digest will create the actual digest thing ok so this is what it looks like so now let me java message so this is what is the digest which we have got for password 123 now let me just have one blank space here ok one blank space I have given after password 123 okay so now uh, let me java c message dot java java message so we got a one blank space has given us a totally different digest value okay so that is the important thing so that is what we have got here so that is one thing so now let us go again back to uh, continue with our Java program and uh, uh, we will actually uh, look into this next uh, thing. Next thing is about digital signature which has been we have been telling from morning. So here uh, Java provides simple methods for doing a digital signing. So there is a method uh, there is an uh, object uh, there is a class called signature which is in java.security the j should be small okay. Uh, generating signature of course signature dot you have to tell now uh, see you know that uh, digital signature first of all you have to create a fingerprint of the message so how will you create the fingerprint of the message by using SHA algorithm or any other MD5 or whatever it may be so that you can do and then after that what is the algorithm you are going to use for uh, signing that basically what I mean to say is the message register has to be encrypted with your private key right the message digest has to be encrypted with your private key for encrypting you have to use your 
uh, what is the algorithm you are going to use whether you are going to use RSA or DSA digital signature algorithm or any other algorithm or ECC whatever it may be so that you have to tell. So this is one of the, the implementation which has been provided SHA-1 with the DSA has been provided and the provider is some okay. A bouncy castle is a different way of doing that. So that, that those parameters you need to look at it. And then if I am going to do with this thing, the signature, I have to initialize first of all what I want to, which key I want to use. So that is what the private key I am using for initializing this thing, uh, thing. Then finally update, again update is always pushing the data, okay, pushing the data to the objects. So what data you want to sign, what is the length of it, both has to be mentioned here. So then actual sign method. Okay. So here that uh, final one was digest. So here is similarly sign method is what which actually is going to do the digital signature for uh, generating signature. Then similarly for verifying signature also same thing is going to be you are to going to follow but only thing is instead of initialize, uh, initializing sign you need to use initialize verify and you have to use the public key. Okay. You need to use the public key is what you have to use instead of the private key for verification. And then input data signature dot verify you have to pass a signature whatever signature you have got that you need to pass as the input parameter. So that is what we have to do here. So again for digital signature we need to generate a key pair so that is what we are doing here. And then same things whatever I have given in bold is what you need to look at it. Update is what, the, what is the data which has to be signed and the sign method is what actually is going to give the actual signature. Okay. So then further verification. So we go for that. So let me just uh, again take you to the code. So that may look much uh, probably better. So I've just given a straightforward string here. You can actually take it, uh, take input from the console also. So uh, it depends on this thing. Then further, I just go ahead and generate a key pair. Already we have seen this. Uh, set the algorithm, uh, size of the key, and generate the key pair. So that we have done. Next is what is what we are going to digitally sign that, sign the data. So this is where we have to set the algorithm. For signing we need to specify what is the hashing algorithm we are going to use and what is the encryption algorithm we are going to use. Okay, Both we need to say as a single step. So it is not like you first create message digest and then you encrypt it. No, it is all as far as Java is concerned signing is one particular operation. Okay, So this is a very fundamental thing, digital signing is one operation. Verification is another single operation, single step operation. Okay, but you need to give the uh, algorithms whatever you want to use. So digital signing basically SHA-1 uh, is digest uh, uh, operation and RSA is your uh, encryption algorithm. So these per, uh, algorithms you have to specify, and then after that you initialize the signature using the uh, uh, the private key. What is the key which you are going to use? That is the private key, and then what is the data you need to sign? So that is what we have to so do and then you push the data whichever to be updated and then finally you sign it. So that is what we have to actually use it. So that is for si signing signature signing and then uh, verification is basically the same thing but for verifying we have to use the public key. So that is what we are using key dot get public is what we are using here and then we have to pass the input. What is our input? Signature because that is what we have to verify right. So that is the thing. So uh, this is what we are trying to do and again data what is the data we need to verify against that is basically the data pushing operation data to sign. So that is the data which we have to push for verification also because comparison has to happen right between uh, the data which was originally there and what is the signature you have got. So that is called that is a verification. So you need to first of all signature you have to do for verifying the operation but actual data you got that you need to push uh, pushes into the through the update method. So this is what we will do and these methods uh, the statements in uh, main method are basically to calling these two signing method and verifying method and printing them. So that is what you have to do. So this is how we will do. So you can see this, this was the data we are trying to sign that is hello do not share this secret. What was the private key used? This was the private key and the signature data basically signed data. So basically signed data 
is what we have got. Okay, first of all, we will get an hash of that, and then hash will be encrypted with this particular private key. So that is what we have got as a signed data. And then further, we uh, sorry, further we got into the public key. What was the public key used? So based on the signed data, we will try. Uh, uh, decrypting that particular uh, this thing, so we will use the uh, public key for verification. Okay, so if you verify, then the both the text has to match. Okay, so what it matches, whether it matches, that are all actually done internally by Java. So it will only give us some result, whether which is true or not, whether the data that you passed a signature and whether the data it has to be verified against the signature and the public key, whether these operations are matching or not. That's the only thing Java will tell us. So that's what it has been told. Verification result is true. Okay. So you can play around this with uh, from our uh, HTTPS learn.pkindia.in where you can uh, fiddle with your public keys and change some values here and there and you can see that there is a fail <laughs> failure in the result. Otherwise this will work perfectly. Uh, okay. Uh, Size and the sign data. Uh, I think public key contains uh, the exponent and the modulus, and the signature can. Public private key. No, yes, yes, public key you. Yeah. Hmm. So it contains both the exponent and the modulus. Hmm. So the sign data, it uh, it thinks that sign data is more than the modulus. In case of I say, uh, I do not think. Can be more than modular size. I am mm, um, not too sure. It's quite. Uh, what I will do is, we can actually take this as a. As this thing, what I will do is. Uh, so you can actually look it here. Uh, asymmetric key so operations or okay let me take classic uh, this one only one okay two zero okay he has not given this so this is a pair of keys okay and then uh, okay I can create on certificate also so I meaning this is anyway required for my maybe uh, that it is being uh, uh, it is shown on yeah, but still, I I need this for another uh, example, for certificate example. So I'll just anyway, just I'll keep this. I'll uh, go further. Uh, what was anyway that uh, input data will not be there. Hmm, uh, okay, so I will uh, go to this code anyway. Your data because the keys are anyway going to be different, but still, let me try to stay the same uh, uh, same input. So fingerprint generation. So this is your message digest, and then this is your public key, and then this is your digital signature, right? And then what we do is this is a thing, and uh, this is your public key. Okay. So verify is going to give you verification is going to be there. So now your question was basically digital signature, and the public key sizes are different, right? Or it, uh, it thinks that uh, the uh, uh, it should be equivalent to the modular size, the signature. Uh, yeah, that's right. Then uh, I think uh, in the code, whatever I have written to display that particular thing may yeah. have some. Okay, so what I have done here is, as far as the, the printing. Yeah, printing is some issues there. Basically, what I have done is I have tried to get the public key and encode it. No, but the same encoding level I am doing um, for signed data also here. Mm -hmm. So, um, same uh, hexadecimal en encoding we need to do. So, that's what a 16 uh, I am trying to do here. So, but then. Uh, in signature, hmm. you are engraving also public key, no? No, sir. No. No, 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 no. So that's where I, I'll just show you this slide. It will make things clearer. So here, if you look at it, uh, the this is a public key. Only the header and modulus are there. So here, the same actually, his point was the size of your 
uh, signature should be the size of your key, right? Key size. No question. The boy always tell the order of each emulation, so it will be linear. Maybe M N or P N whatever. Each greater signature part will be always greater than the key size. No key. Uh, that's what. Uh, if key size is 1024 bit. Uh, signature also, as far as RSA is concerned. Yeah, it will be more, more than that. Mm, not, uh, e, uh, not really. No, sir, because what we are doing is uh, you are actually, whatever the input text may be, you are actually making into a 256 bit if you are using uh, SHA uh, uh, 1. So basically, uh, 256 bit. So. Correct. So uh, ultimately, your whatever data you are going to sign, if you are using SART 256, your input data is going to be only 256 bits. Once it is matching, then it's okay. Same bit will be there. Okay. It's not matching. Hash is fixed. But after hash, it will hash. After encrypting hash, it will be different from the hash. Yeah, it will differ from the hash, but size I am saying. Exactly, that's what they are saying. The key size is going to be the what is what going to be this thing. But here it is written that it is within the key size. This is mean once any key you are applying, hmm. and here unfortunately we are applying key on the hash value. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, your uh, your point is basically that uh, if the uh, I'm not talking about signature. Yeah. If you're uh, simply using asymmetric key RSA key pair encryption, yeah. then that point is right. But uh, here we are actually talking about signature because in signature uh, the input data is always going to be uh, the hash value size. Always hash value size can be 256. Yeah, yeah, either 256 or 512. Uh, so it can go. Yeah. So you are you are you are you are concerning it will within the 256. That's why. Not really. My because I, I will be using padding. No, my key size is 1024 bit. So While well, uh, input data is 256 bit. Correct. Same thing. That is the point that he is also telling actually. So, but here I feel that's what in my screen it looks same only, but we need to see how it is. Uh, he, he feels that signed data is actually slightly. Uh, Manish, your point was sign, uh, signature data is basically greater than the key size. Is what yeah, it smaller is, than the key? It is, it, is it is correct. Uh, uh, actually, it is adding that header part which you are, you are not considering. No? It's adding that in the public key you have the header and modulus part. In public key, you can see that there is 30819. This is not what we normally see. We see two integers. Yeah, that's true. Of two integers. Now there is a header also. So this is what? In a public key, you have no, both so header and modulus. But uh, if you look at the uh, the program, the uh, that's why you cannot actually compare, visually compare the sizes of this thing. So this is a point here. So now let me again come back and uh, continue with my presentation where we are. Okay, so next is the digital certificate. Uh, so here we'll be using the Java. Uh, of course, again, J is small here. Uh, there is a spelling mistake, java.security.cert. Java so uh, these are the uh, classes which are available, certificate, X509 certificate, certificate factory, cert store, etc. Of course, Anup has told about DR and PEM. Uh, so these methods are available. Uh, one of the method get issue DN is uh, deprecated now. So I'll just tell what is the thing. And of course, certificate revocation list is there, but uh, I will not get into that right now. So. Uh, basically what, uh, um, you will not be able to directly, I said no, in Java, uh, in as far as cryptography APIs are concerned, you will not be able to get a direct object of that particular implementation. So what they do is they provide us with one factory method. Okay, so through that you'll be able to get an object of that particular class. So what they do is, say for example, RSA algorithm implementation they have done. They don't want you to create RSA A1 or R1 is equal to new RSA that they don't want to do. Okay. You, by using the new operator, you will be create an instance of that classes, right? 
in Java. So that they don't want to do. So what they want to do is you use this factory method, we will give you an object. So that is a factory method. So here also, by using this certificate factory, what we are going to do is we will be getting an instance of the x.509 implementation. So there is a class which actually does in Java x.509 implementation. Absolutely, sir. That's the point. So we cannot make on instance. So th that's the thing. But of course, you are free to use some other body I other. Yeah. Exactly. Same thing. We'll have to use. That's the point. So now here uh, actually. No, no. There is a separate key store. Is there for Java? Uh, then what is called in Java? Key store only. JKS. J Java key store. J JKS is there. It will not talk, Java will not talk Microsoft key store. No, it can talk, it can talk. Yeah, yeah. It can talk. So, uh, suppose my uh, team resides sometimes in the system, hmm. or sometimes in the dongle, hmm. and we are using Java. Hmm. So, how Java will instruct? Um, will that's it that on the system or system key store or uh, other than Java key store? Uh, no, that, that's the thing. That is a no, no. no uh, Yeah, correct. Absolutely. So here I just want to tell uh, a couple of things, just uh, two points. Yes. One is basically uh, uh, the Java key store you are using, you can actually create a key pair, you can store that in the key pair, you can load them and all those things you can do. So that is different. But we are now talking here about uh, crypto tokens, which we buy from our certifying authorities. So for that, you actually will not be able to load it into the key store because private key cannot come out from this, uh, this particular crypto token for DSE token, so proprietary. So you cannot come you cannot load that into the this thing. So what instead we can do is, we can always prompt the user to give the pin. So that way we can actually code the program. Of course I have the program also, but I had one DLL file missing. So that's why I'm not able to show that demo. So that is, um, uh, that way we'll be able to prompt it. But if you want to play around with the full-fledged Java key store using hardware, obviously you have to use the Java card. So that is the point. Huh. You have to all those things on the uh, GUI like Yeah, yeah, this is, <laughs> no, this is mainly for a developer, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've enabled, I said, I, I already, I, I can show you a demo also. Only thing, I, I had my, uh, actually I changed my laptop. So that uh, uh, configuration file actually I'm missing. PKCS 11.CFG is what I'm searching for. If that was there with me, I would have shown that token also. So I'll just show you that particular, uh, I have that uh, token tester, I think uh, that was the program. No, no, it's not, it, it's not that thing. I need to get, sir, this is the one. So this is the one actually you are telling about uh, this one. So here you can actually try to use and all those things. So I was just look missing this particular file. If I had this thing, I, I would have just played around with my own token only. So this can be, this is actually possible. Yeah, PKCS 11. And uh, this is a file actually which I was missing for. So this file, if I'm able to figure out, uh, I, I previously used in Eclipse and all those things. So now I just trying to show it in a simple this thing. So that, that's a thing. So anyway, that I will not get into it right now. I'll come back to digital certificate. Yeah, so I think we'll uh, take it up. So this one basically, uh, now let us take one certificate file. So this certificate file, I've taken my old certificate file, balasign.cr, which is actually Yimudra certificate, whichever I've taken. So that actually I need to convert into a byte array and then get an object of the X509 implementation. And then I will uh, generate this one and I can now print the serial number of the certificate. I can get the public key of the certificate. I can find out the issuer. Actually, get issuer DN was basically a older method in the older version of Java. Now they have deprecated it. So now we got a get issuer x500 principle. So this is a method which they have said. So uh, meaning this is a Java latest version 21. So that was a older one. And uh, get signature, meaning every you know that every certificate has a signature of the issuer. So that signature you can see. 
and the signatures algorithm name also we'll try we can get there are many more but i'm just sticking to with this so now let me go to this thing uh, java digital certificate so uh, this was my uh, serial number of the certificate and uh, i used uh, meaning uh, the key details are public key 2048 bit keys meaning it was a older one Okay, it was given in 2014 and all those things, public exponent and all those things are there. Algorithm is also given as this one. So now I have another small program where uh, I have just taken, so if you don't have a certificate, you can actually use our HTTPS learn.pkindia.in. Just now I created a certificate. So same certificate we can take, Bala DSC. I have just kept the name here as Bala DSC temp.crt. So I will just show you that one also. So um, digital certificate two, I think, yeah. So here I have whatever I data I entered, Malaji Rajendran, Office uh, CDAC, Bangalore, whatever data I gave is given here, because it's a self-signed certificate, whatever I gave, and my details, whatever issued signature is there, and I'm using SHA-256 with uh, RSA algorithm, meaning for generating the certificate, and all those things are available. So here also we use 2048 bit keys for in the initial beginning, if you are noted. So this is uh, my self-signed certificate. So this is what, how you can uh, do uh, uh, implementations using uh, uh, this thing. So I think we have come to the end of the session. So similarly, CRL is there. CRL, I leave it to you as a homework. <laughs> <laughs> so so x.509 CRL and uh, get, uh, you can actually get the revoked certificates, serial number certificates, get next update, et cetera. So that's it. So thanks, yeah. Bye, sir. This library is also support port pointer or? No, no, no. This does not support nothing. <laughs> so this is a traditional classic cryptography. It does not support post quantum. So as of now. <laughs> so that's the thing. OK. So thank you. Thanks, uh, all of you. I think we can, uh, uh, tea is getting served outside. And uh, kits are getting uh, ready to be distributed. I think thanks for your patient listening. We will be sharing all of this data and today's sessions and uh, everything in our uh, uh, both website as well as uh, uh, the uh, the uh, YouTube channel, whatever Anup was mentioning, so that we will take care. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>